the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Geiger counter here studio reads 632 wrenches. That's six times more than enough to kill a man. Down through the ages, the prophets have forewarned us that in one day, thousands of years of accomplishments could be wiped away by the destructive hand of power. Now that day has come. All communication with the outside world has stopped just 15 hours after the first nuclear bomb fell on Formosa. The whole world has been silenced, annihilated by nuclear bombs. Three billion people murdered by a thousand nuclear bombs and the lethal fallout. Maybe there's no one left to hear my voice, no living human being to record the end of the world. And now this is Ted Johnson for KBGE Radio. <sighs> didn't come, Dad. Larry didn't come. He's lost. They're all lost. Not a sign of life. New York, Paris, Moscow. All's quiet now. Look, Joanna. It's holding at 47. Why, we may be saved, just as I planned it. I'm not sure I want to, Dad. Not without Larry. I'm sorry, honey. I'm afraid he didn't make it. But there's always hope. Come, let's go inside. And it right, Joanna. Our house out here miles from any city, the cliffs, the updrafts of air to fight back the radiation, and provisions for the three of us for months. There's only two of us now, Dad. Honey, I couldn't very well order Larry to come out here and stay with us, even though you are engaged to him. at the door, Dad. It's Larry. He's made it. Wait. Don't open that door until you're sure it's Larry. It is Larry. He's hurt. He'll contaminate it. Larry! Larry! Don't. Don't open that door. We can't take the chance. Let me go. I've got to open that door. <laughs> Wait. Don't touch him. He's red hot with radioactivity. It's not Larry. 
We've got to help him, whoever he is. Wait. We'd better check the Geiger counter. Seven hundred and forty mentions, and he's still breathing. Why? He should be dead. But he's still breathing. Nobody can take that much and still live. Don't touch him. It's my responsibility. Who are you? I'm Steve Morrow. It's my brother. Better keep away from him. Granger? Granger. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's okay. God, he's still alive. I don't know why, but he's still alive. He must be dying. The counter showed 740 wrenches. Where are the bedrooms? Upstairs. Come with me. No. They can't stay here. Yes, they can, Dad. But they're contaminated. It's too late for them, but not us. I'll get you some water and clean clothes. Get out of here or I'll kill you. Don't shoot. There's a girl out here. Throw your weapon on the floor. I warn you, this gun's loaded. Okay, okay. Stop it, Dad. Don't. Move on into the room here. Come in where I can see you. Provisions for only three people. Mac, we're staying, so forget the sob story. You can't stay here. It isn't the way I planned it. I have provisions for three people only. I'm Joanna Ramsey. Please bring your suitcase upstairs and I'll get you some fresh water.
wait. I didn't mean nothing. I was just looking to see if anyone was alive in the house. What's your name? I'm Tim Henderson. I, I'm a rancher. I live up on the cliff. Sorry I roughed you up. Sure. Come on. <laughs> My God, I knock you down. Come on up the house. No. He can't stay. Oh. Let the worthless old coot stay. We're all going to die anyway. It looks like we're stuck with each other, so let's understand the rules. Now, I'm the ranking officer. I mean, person. I'm in command. If we're voting, I vote for me. Oh, don't be funny. This is serious. Shut up, Jada. My second in command will be Steve. This counter is registering 47 wrenches of radioactivity now. 50 is considered dangerous, 500 fatal. But that depends on the individual. Different people have different absorption rates and capacities. We may live, and we may not. There's a lot we don't know about it. Some of us may be dying now. Well, how long before we can leave this museum? Yeah. I got some things working for me in L.A., big things. So how long before we can get out of here? There is no Los Angeles. No Los Angeles? You're kidding I don't believe it. But there are no radio signals, long or short way, from any city in the world. She's right. The six of us in this house may be the beginning of a new era, a new civilization. Seven. My brother's still alive. Not for long, I'm afraid. But be that as it may, I've spent ten years getting ready for this day. Now, I'll brief you as to why we're still alive. This is my house with its own generators and food supply. These cliffs surrounding the house on three sides are full of lead-bearing ore that acts as a barrier against radioactivity. The lake here on the fourth side is heated from an underground heat source, probably an old volcano or maybe a crack in the Earth's crust. Anyway, the warm air from the lake's waters creates an updraft. And it's strong enough, I might add, to carry radioactive contamination out of the valley, as long as it doesn't rain. If the rains come too soon, we'll all be contaminated and die. That is, if we don't let other forces destroy us before that time. What other forces? Never mind that now, but make no mistake about it, you're not welcome here. This was planned for just three people. That's how much food we have. If we divide that among the six of us, we'll soon have empty stomachs and rebellion. I have the keys to the storeroom. I and I alone will say when and how much food we eat. Any argument about that, and I'll settle it with this. Oh, you're a big man, packing that gun. Just don't you let go of it. I don't intend to. Where are you going with that? My brother. Save the food. Your brother's a casualty. Face it. Take it to him. Dad, I've never seen you like this before. We can't become animals. We're still human, and we've got to act like it. It's just what I'm afraid of. They're all human. Granger, how you doing? I'm not going to die. I thought I was, but I'm not. I know I'm not, no. Well, it's a miracle. You soaked up 700 wrenches. I don't understand it, but I'm glad. Here, press some to eat. I don't want that. I need fresh meat. 
raw meat. Well, I'll put your order in with the chef. I don't know, but I think it'll do me good. Well, uh, why don't you wash up and get in some clean clothes, huh? No, no, no water. Just, just let me rest. I'll be okay, just the way I am. You didn't tell me how you two happened to be uh, near this valley yesterday. Uh, we're not exactly on the main highway. We were camped on the other side of the lake. That's not too far off the highway. We are on our way to California. Oh, I thought it'd be a kick to sleep out. Yeah, then our old car wouldn't start and we were stranded. You two uh, married? She's an old friend of the family. Look, kid, you can be a friend of my family any time you want. <laughs> John is a performer, a dancer. I'm her manager. I, uh, I guess it was stuck. <laughs> now you know why she can't work with a fan. Nice looking guy. Your brother? My fiance. He was supposed to be here yesterday. Oh. We're going to marry him. Huh? I'm sorry. Really sorry. What's the matter? Strange. I, I felt like I heard someone calling. Not really calling. Something strange. Come on, snap out of it. Let's go to your father's storeroom and see if we can find some canned beef for my brother. Well, Steve, come with me. I want to check the radioactivity outside. Go ahead, Steve. I'll get the canned beef. How are we doing, John? It's at 49. That's up two since last night. It's as if some magic force is holding those clouds up out of this valley. That's the warm air from the lake. Creates an updraft. Yes, I know. Oh, yes, I told you this morning. I've known about this valley for a long time. The lake, too. Read about it in college in geology. Oh, you a geologist? Mm-hmm. I work for an oil company about 100 miles south of here. Then you just didn't stumble in here yesterday by accident? No, my brother and I headed here the minute we heard about the bombings. Hmm, smart thinking on your part. Do you know, the real force of the atom has never been fully calculated? I think it reached its fulfillment yesterday. Yes, but only as we know it affects our present form of life. Our life as we knew it before this nuclear inferno covered the Earth. You think some other form of life could have survived? Well, I'm only saying that it's... True force has never been fully understood. Are you confusing me now, John? Do you remember the H-bomb test at Matsuo some years ago? Sure. I captained one of those ships. Five days after the blast, I towed the animal ship out of target zero. The outside world never had a true account of that test. What are you trying to say, John? Coyote. In the daytime. Hmm. Must be a lot of game in this valley now. Contaminated game. Fighting for life just the way we are.
the matter, Granger? There's live game outside. I can tell. Yes, we heard a coyote during the day. I can feel it. And I need meat. Granger, that, that game's contaminated. If you ate that, you'd die. You would die. But not me. I can't eat that canned junk. I've got to have some meat. Fresh, do you hear? That's all you're going to get for a long time. That's what you think. That's just what you think. Why, three weeks. Thought we'd all be dead by now. Even Granger got out of bed yesterday. Steve, I know he's your brother, but... But what? Well, he... He gives me a funny feeling. Logically, he should have been dead long ago. But there's no such thing as logic anymore. What's so illogical about my brother? You know as well as I do. He hasn't taken food or water in three weeks. Not since he's been here. He says he doesn't need food. And last night he slipped out of the house and didn't come back until dawn. Radiation must have affected his mind. He's a mutation, Steve. Face it. He's a freak of this new atomic world of ours. I'm going outside for a walk. Well, uh, don't go too far. Stay inside of the house. Why? Because I say so, that's why. Aren't you tired, Grange? You need more sleep. I'm not tired. I'm not afraid of anything out there. In fact, I like it. Would you like to go with me? Oh, no, I, I have things to do. I think he's dangerous. Uh, I don't think so. He should be destroyed. Destroyed? My brother? Yes, for our safety. You can't do that, John. Well, not just because he's my brother, but don't you see? It's important to us that he live. I don't see why. Uh, not sure yet. We have to study him. If it doesn't rain in the next few weeks, I think we're going to live. Somehow I knew we wouldn't die. My father always seemed so positive. You know, right after the bombs came, I didn't much care if I lived or died. Don't talk like that. It's true, Joanna. But these past few weeks with you...
Now I feel I've got a big reason to live. Me too, Steve. Joanna? What's wrong? Did I misunderstand? Didn't you hear it? Hear what? Something out there. That strange feeling. Sound, something. Stronger than the last time I felt it. It's just some harmless animal in the bushes, that's all. No, Steve. It's more. Let's go back in the house, please. His bones are still moist. Look at their footprints. They're Granger's. You think he ate that rabbit? He must have. He spends most of his nights prowling around in these woods. Forty-nine wrenches. You think a man could eat that poison meat and live? No. No human could. Defies all the laws of man and God. There may be a new set of laws, John. Laws for post-nuclear life we know nothing about. Well, out with it, Steve. Say what you mean. Well, I'm only guessing, but we know that even small amounts of radiation can produce change. Now, if for some reason a man could survive complete saturation, a thousand generations of change could take place in a, a matter of weeks. A Matsuo test. What do you mean? Nothing. Go on with your theory. I'm afraid there are more Grangers out here. And even worse than him. All of us have survived more cumulative exposure than we ever thought possible. You uh, mean we all may become like your brother, stalking these woods at night, eating raw meat? It's possible. Any bright theories as to what to do in this situation? No. You know, when my brother couldn't find the answer to something, he looked it up in the Bible. He believed that it held the answers to everything. For I am with thee to save thee and deliver thee, saith the Lord. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. I will redeem thee out of the land of the terrible. I had enough of that Bible when I was a kid. Well, it's... Easy to see it had no effect on you, Mickey. I'm gonna go look for Granger. What was that? Maybe you better tell us what the Bible says about rain. 
In our situation, we'd better pray that it doesn't rain. Not for weeks, anyway. Because if it does rain in this valley, it'll be coming down through clouds saturated with nuclear death. Maybe we'll be safe, like Noah and the Ark. Right now, there's about 40 wrenches of activity in this room. If it rains, that will move up into the hundreds of wrenches in a matter of hours, and we'll all be dead. Or like Granger, if we're unlucky. But maybe the updrafts from the lake will hold the clouds back. They will, Dad. We've been lucky so far. We're going to live. I, I just feel it. I hope you're right, sweetheart. And if the weather does clear, starting tomorrow, we'll have to go on half rations. How much is half of nothing? I've stored some seeds and grain, and I have books and materials on every craft necessary to sustain life. <laughs> Mickey Brown, farmer and craftsman. Oh, uh, another thing. We're about out of fresh water, but there's a spring-fed pool not so far from the cliffs. Hey, Joanna. Maybe we could take a swim in the pool. Well, if Dad says it's all right. Oh, it's safe. I checked it today. And starting tomorrow, we can all take turns bathing there. Well, I'm telling you one thing. I've taken more baths in the past two months than I have in all my born days together. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're still alive, Tim. Don't let it touch me. Don't let the rain touch me. It's okay, Grange. The clouds aren't going to come in the valley. You're lying to me. It's going to rain. Come on. Come on. Come on back to the house. Going to touch me. Grange. Grange, come on back to the house. This place is spooky even in the sunshine. It feels great, though. I'm so quiet. I'd give anything to hear that downtown traffic again. I didn't realize how isolated it would be from the house. You are good looking. Clean cut in that bit. It's something new for Mickey. Mickey? Oh, he's all eyes for you. He hasn't even given me the time of day anymore. Oh, I'm not interested in Mickey. Well, he better not be. Otherwise, well, I'd have to make a play for Steve. That would be unfair competition for you, baby. Yes, I, I see what you mean. Mickey always comes back to Mama. Hey, what's the matter, kid? Somebody's watching us. I can feel it. I didn't hear anything. Something's moving over there in the bushes. Oh, it's probably one of the fellas. It's probably old Timothy. Hey, Timothy! <sighs> Hurry up. 
Martin, let's get out of here. Range is not the only one hunting game. And after they've finished off the game, we'll be next. This place is cursed. Steve, we've got to get rid of your brother. John, he's the only way to find out what we're up against. Don't you see that? The animals on the ship, the Matsuo test, they forewarned of something like this. You know, you keep mentioning that. You're going to keep up the mystery or you're going to tell me about it? Tonight, back at the house, I'll show you after the others have gone to bed. I have the evidence. What's she looking at? You said I didn't see anything at the pool. You said it was just my imagination. That's right. You just became upset. Steve, somebody was looking at me, tried to talk to me. What'd he say? Nothing you'd understand. Nothing I'd understand, for that matter. Well, you won't go swimming alone in the pool anymore. I'll stand guard. My skin was tingling. My pulse was pounding. You're still upset. Come on, let's go back to the house. Steve. Do you believe in mental telepathy? I'm afraid I'm reading your thoughts, if that's what you mean. What am I thinking? It's not the same way you were thinking about me a few days ago. I'm sorry, Steve. I just feel like I'd like to be alone right now. I'm sorry too, Joanna. Mickey, don't scare me like that. I just want to talk to you, that's all. You know, I bet I haven't said a dozen words to you since I got here. Hey, look, what's so bad about me? I don't drink, I don't smoke, and once I even gave some money to a drunken bum. My old man. <laughs> Come on. Don't give me that hard to get stuff. Come on. <laughs> don't! You belong to Jada. I belong to me. Get it? Me. Hey there, buddy. Oh, it's you, Miss Charter. You nearly scared that britches off me. Well, don't do that. Where's your manners? Care for a taste of some of the best whiskey in these mountains? It is whiskey. Hey, where'd you get it? Made it myself, that's where. I make it by the barrels back in my place. It's <laughs> 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 awful, Jim. <laughs> the first taste is never good, Miss Jota. It's that long second one that puts hair on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> there. I just saw Granger walk up the mountain trail through that fog, and it didn't phase him. 
Do you remember anything about the Matsuo bomb test? Well, there were some vague rumors right after that, weren't there? Something I have to show you. As I told you, my job was to tow the animal ship out of Target Zero. I got the first look at those animals. Well, the newspapers said they were all destroyed. The newspapers lied. Three of those animals lived through it. Lived through an H-bomb? There was a law against taking photographs, but no law against sketching what we had seen. There were a thousand animals on that ship. Mm -hmm. That was a chipmunk. This was alive? Yes. It lived for three days. Our third survivor was a monkey. Its skin looked like rubber, but it felt more like metal. Armor plated. Nature's answer to complete nuclear radiation. Hey, that's a million years of evolution with one bomb. You say they lived for three days? When we got back to the inspection ship, they were dead. Well, if we could figure out what killed them, it may help us. We never knew. After we washed them down, we went down to inspect. They were normal, except for their appearance. But they refused food and water. New species? Yes. They were the forerunners of whatever it is we have out there. Sometimes I have a feeling of doom. Well, I know this much. There are two forms of life fighting for survival in this valley, and only one can win. John, it's got to be us. You know, I started this thing just to stay alive. But you've given me a deep feeling of responsibility toward the welfare of mankind. Our kind. I think I'll turn in now. Good night, John. Yes? I'll tell the girls the first thing in the morning. Girls. Yes. They should bear children as soon as possible. That's enough. Now, Mickey, we've had enough of you. Get your things and get out of this house. You wouldn't do that to an animal, Dad. He stays. Are you all right, Russ? Get out of my life. Mickey. A sea captain can perform the marriage ceremony in case of an emergency. Joanna, I want you to marry Steve. I want you to have children. There'll be no wedding, Dad, and no children. You have a responsibility to the future. What would Mother say? Your mother? And Larry, what would he say? They're both dead. I'm the only one who knows. Knows? Knows what? Have you been listening to me? Yes, Dad. Uh, I'll marry Steve in a week. If he's still alive. And if I am.
What are you doing, love? This little gadget's gonna open that storeroom for me. Can you imagine us having a kid? Of course, we won't tell him his mother was a exotic dancer. I wonder what's wrong with Joanna. She goes around in her own little world now. She slipped off her rocker. Maybe we all are. <laughs> Not me, baby. You still go for her, don't you? You're just plain dirt to her, but you still want her. All I want is a key to open that storeroom. All this time you've been saying it was you and me. But you meant her. You liar. Okay, okay. So I lied a little. A little? The only friend you ever had in this world was me. The only one who ever loved you was me. M E me. Now listen, you keyboard. Present from the hood, lover. Now beat it. I want to finish this key. We can't go up there for at least two more months. And we're running out of supplies. Only enough for about two more weeks. wouldn't give me any. They? There's more of you up there? Uh, stronger. Much stronger. How many? How many more? Uh, strong, stronger. Uh, uh, food. Uh, You won't be needing food now, poor devil. Look at the head. The strange bone structure. It's like those animals at Matsuo. And the same mutated skin the animals had. And, and more like him up there. Stronger. Stage two, this one. Stage three, stronger. Stage four, maybe invulnerable. How about stage one? Who's that? That's Granger. My brother is stage one. There's no doubt about it. They're coming closer to the house every night. We'll have to take turns standing guard, Steve. I'd use Mickey, but we can't trust him with a gun in his hand. I know his kind. Spawned in Bilgewater. Sometimes you're a lifesaver. Jonathan, we're like two peas in a pod. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're 
feeling lower than I had no well. But give it a whack of this stuff. Yeah, give it a whack of this. And we're high as a silk hat on Sunday. Come on, you big one. My jug, please. That was the last drop I had. Good. Then we'll have no more of this disgusting behavior. Right? Sailor? There's one like you in every crowd. Never make it. But I, uh... Well, what have you got to say about it? <laughs> Personally, I hate the stuff. Have a nice nap? <laughs> Caught me. I must have dozed off. <laughs> Say, have you seen Tim? He's not in the house anyplace. He's probably sleeping it off in the woods somewhere. You know, I'm really worried about that old coot. He shouldn't have broken his jug. You're right. I had no idea he was an alcoholic. Well, if he doesn't show up by daybreak, I'll go out and find him. I'll go with you. It was my mistake. You don't suppose he tried to get back up over those cliffs, do you? Well, he better not. If he does, it'll be the end of him. Good night.
easy, Timothy. It's, it's just a little rabbit. My God! Tim, don't. Don't go into that fog. Don't go into that fog. You'll be killed, sure. John! Steve! What happened? Oh, I sprained my ankle. Where's Tim? Back up over the cliff. He went back to his whiskey still. Did you go after him? Into that vapor? How long were we up there? Minute, hour. What difference does it make? Steve, I've had the course. Well, come on, we'll get you washed up. Don't tell Joanna. I've just got a sprained ankle, understand? Sure, John. Come on. Let's get back to the house. He's dead. Believe me, Steve, it's better this way. Poor Granger. Now my whole family's gone. No, Steve. You and Joanna are the new family now. Perhaps for the whole human race. Look at those punctures. It's like... like three steel claws. Steel claws. It's like the hand of the monkey in your drawings. Matsu. Just your imagination. No. I was 40 feet no. away from you and I didn't hear a thing. Oh, please, Steve, take me home. Please. Joanna insists this thing tried to talk to her. How about the way it looked? She said it looked like a, an ape. Sketches of Matsuo, the monkey. But this thing is man-sized. Means it's a man, not an ape. 
How do we fight it? How do we kill it? You're the one who said we'd come up with an answer. But how? It eats contaminated flesh, breathes contaminated air. The things that kill a man, it thrives on. What's the point? You're driving at something. Just that in order to kill it, we must first understand it. Now, we know it has fears. It was close enough to Joanna to attack her, but it wouldn't follow her into the pool. Don't scream. I mean it. What do you want? I never had time for your kind of woman. You're something new in my life. No. 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 Well, you won't hate me when there's just the two of us. There'd be no point to it. No. You get what I mean? No. No. Mickey. No, Mickey. Let the kid alone. Joanna, go back to the house. I have a few words for this child molester here. You don't know when you're through, do you? You said the two of us. But all along you meant her. Yeah, that's right. Now you know. You and your dime store stuff. You're cheap. A cheapie. I didn't know how cheap you are till I met her. She hates your guts. You're cheap to her. She'd rather kill herself first. Come on. Let's not fight like a couple of kids. Let's go take a moonlight swim, huh? Beat it. I don't want any part of you. Well, you decided to come back to Charlie. Mm -hmm. oh, honey, oh,
a gun for, Captain. Where's Jada? Well, we had a little beef. She didn't come back. Stayed outside to cool off, I guess. Okay, Mickey. I got something to settle with you. <laughs> Tomorrow, maybe I'm beat right now. You go next to Joanna again, and I'm gonna kill you. Kill me? <laughs> I haven't had a laugh all day. Why he was spared by the bombs, I'll never know. He'll kill you, Steve. Get him first. Now. Here, take this. Just sneak up on Mickey and empty it into him, huh? John, you know me better than that. It's the same feeling that made you go up the mountain for Tim. But there's so much at stake. At least carry a gun. Here. Get one. Out of the storeroom. Get it now. And be ready to use it. How long before a guy can get out of here? As far as I'm concerned, you can leave now. You know, all this reminds me of that kid song, Ten Little Indians, that got knocked off one at a time. Same way with us. First there was seven. Now there's... Now there's... Three little, two little, one little Indian. And then there was nine. Try that again. Please, try that again. Not me, Captain. I know when to cool it. Like right now. Three little, two little, one little Indian.
Joanna. Joanna. I heard her screaming, but she's not in her room. I have a strange feeling. She's in danger, Steve. What thing? The thing out there has got my baby. I'm going after it. Wait. There's a special Luger in the storeroom with a 30-round magazine. Get it. Steve, put your revolver under my pillow. You won't need it. If there's no other way, use that Luger on Joanna. Joanna! better, Captain. If there's two men and only one gun, I like to have it. <laughs> Looks like your ship's falling apart, don't it? Well, you've been no help. You wouldn't find Jada. You wouldn't help Steve look for Joanna while you're lower than scum. I'm a coward. I only fight when I have to and on my own conditions. And one of them is that I know what I'm fighting. Joanna! Three little, two little, one little Indian. Da -da. You know, you're a sucker. I know you went after old Tim into that fog. <laughs> Kill yourself with that worthless old coot. Oh, that's why you're acting so brave. That's why you're moving in. Moving in? Oh. <laughs> I'm taking over. Works the house, your daughter. If she gets back, I'd make a better old man for her kids than Steve would. They'd be tough like me. It looks like it, it would rain after all. You still think that rain will kill us all? You'll know soon enough. There's your ring, Captain. A good. How long do you think we'll live now? Well, here. Get me a sample of the rainwater and I'll test it. doesn't register. That's pure water. Well, what do you know? 
Just plain old rainwater. That's it. Water. It's afraid of water. Joanne and Steve may be safe. What's afraid, Captain? You cracking up on me? Don't you see, you idiot? That thing out there, that atomic fiend. It's afraid of pure water. That's why it wouldn't go in the pool. thinking in that sick mind of yours? Simple. I'm going to shoot Steve right between the eyes. In God's name, why? Well, I thought you knew, smart man. I want Joanna. I don't hear it anymore. Hear what? The weird sound. Tried to... Speak to me. Steve, it was Larry. What killed him? Well, he was created to live in a contaminated atmosphere. I guess the rain must be pure. He couldn't stand it. I guess that means that all the other people like Larry will be killed by the rain, too. Then there is a future. Yes, Joanna. Mickey! 